Tout d'un coup, on fait silence, on fait silence, à quoi se passe-t-il this is a short periodic table that consists of the first three rows of the periodic table. If you understand the elements in it, you can write and understand chemical equations. Let's talk about the short periodic table. We're going to cover the first four rows, which are common in daily life. The first element in the periodic table is the H on the top left. H is a symbol that stands for hydrogen. Hydrogen is an element. What is the smallest unit in hydrogen? An atom is the smallest unit of matter. I'll explain by taking a look at the structure of an atom. In an atom, there's a nucleus, and in a nucleus, there are positively charged protons. Protons are called yang sung ja in Korean, and yang means positive. There must be negatively charged particles now that we have positively charged protons. Negatively charged particles are called electrons. Protons have a positive charge, and electrons have a negative charge. Can we feel the electricity from them? We can't, because they're in a neutral state. The positive charge of a proton is equal to the negative charge of an electron. So when they're together, it is electrically neutral. Elements other than hydrogen have similar but more complex structures. Let's first take a look at this picture to understand how it gets more complex. This is the picture of the 118th, the most complex element. Moments ago, we looked at the simplest element, hydrogen. When a proton is added, an electron is added too, and it stays electrically neutral. So when we get to the 118th element, there are 118 protons and 118 electrons in the element. Remember that electrons are orbiting around the nucleus? When there are multiple electrons, there should be multiple energy levels, or orbitals, so that the electrons don't crash into each other. The orbitals should not coincide. This picture describes what the 118th element might look like. It's an imagined picture because human eyes cannot see what it really looks like. Let's take a look at the lowest energy level. First, second. I've drawn a few elements that have many electrons. An element with the most orbitals has up to seven orbitals. The innermost orbital doesn't have a lot of space since it's the smallest. It can only hold up to two electrons. How many electrons could the seventh orbital hold? Much more, of course. Let's go back to the first element, hydrogen. There is one proton and one electron orbiting around. Hydrogen is the simplest element, and there are elements with much more complex structures. What comes next? It's helium at the top right. Since helium is the second element, there are one nucleus in the atom, two protons, and two electrons as it's electrically neutral. This is it for the first row. Why? Because these elements have a small orbital that can only hold as many as two electrons. So the third element, lithium, belongs in the second row, not the first. There are many more elements other than lithium in the second row. Let's look at the picture again. Let's go back to the lowest energy level. There are two electrons in it. Then there is the second orbital. Lithium is the first element on the periodic table that holds electrons within the second orbital. So now let's look into the third element, lithium. Because it's the third element, it has three electrons, two in the first orbital and one in the second orbital and a nucleus for each of the elements in the second row, including beryllium, the fourth element. Beryllium has four protons, which means it has four electrons as well, two in the first orbital and two in the second orbital. Boron has two in the first orbital and three in the second orbital. Carbon has two in the first and four in the second. Nitrogen has a total of seven, two in the first and five in the second. Oxygen has six in the second. Fluorine, seven in the second. Neon, 8 in the second. And the next element goes over to the third row. Why? Because the second orbital can only hold up to 8 electrons. Sodium belongs in the third row because it holds electrons in the third orbital. The elements in the third row hold electrons in the third orbital, as few as 1 and as many as 8. When it goes over to the next row, we can assume that the next energy level is going to come in. 
These three rows are called the short periodic table. They are the main elements. We're going to briefly cover the elements in the fourth row because they are commonly encountered in daily life. They are in the fourth row, so they should have four orbitals. There are potassium, calcium, and so on. Krypton at the end of the row has 18 electrons. Now that it has a much bigger orbital, there's room for many electrons. So the fourth energy level can hold up to 18 electrons. So far we've covered from the first row to the fourth row. Let's wrap it up. The first orbital can hold two electrons. The second can hold eight electrons. The third can also hold eight electrons. The elements at the right end of the table have their orbitals completely full with electrons. If you know this much, you've understood the short periodic table.